creating new layers in ArcGIS Pro is really easy, but there are many steps. Let's go through them. First, have a catalog tab here. And in that, we can navigate in the project. Now, depending if you're creating a shape file, you would use the folder system, or if you're creating it in an existing file geodatabase, you use the database option. I'm gonna use the best practice of a database option. But before I do that, let me just show you how you would create a shapefile. That would be under folders. You go into, in this case, the home folder. I've created a vector folder, and then you can actually right click, go new and create a shapefile, which will open up the geoprocessing tool to create a feature class. And it goes through and allows you to have all the settings. But we're gonna be using, as I said, the best practice, and we're gonna be creating it in the home database, which is a file geodatabase. You can see here this little home icon on the databases. I click this, I go into this folder. And in this case, it's likely empty for you. That's okay if you're creating for the first time. We go new, and now we get different op options. In this case, a layer is in the Esri world called a feature class. So we're gonna create a feature class and we're gonna name it. In this case, we'll name it plots. The alias is if you needed to change the name, don't worry about that, we'll just leave that blank. The feature class type, this is where you get to select the actual data type that's gonna be stored. In this case, they're plot points, so I'm gonna choose points. If it was uh, survey lines or if it was uh, a polygon area, you would choose the appropriate one. You can only choose one. M values are for really for lines, and we're not gonna be using that in this course nor this program, but it's it's for being able to calculate a distance on a line, and we're not doing that. Z values are for altitude. So X, Y, and then Z is the altitude. You can leave that on or you can turn it off. Depends on what you need. There's no harm in leaving it on in this case. And you can see here, add output to current map. And you'll notice I have a navigation map open already, so it would add to that. I'm gonna turn that off. I don't wanna add it. Next, this allows me to set which fields I'd like to include on this new layer. There, by default, there'll be an object ID, which is a unique identifier. It's just a number between one and whatever number of features you add. So think of it as a counter. If, uh, if you need to add your own, you, you would. I, I like to add my own. I don't like to depend on this because it can randomly change. So in this case, I'll call this one plot ID. And then you can hit enter and then go to the This, I had to double click on it to open it and you get the different data types. So in this case, the plot ID can be of what data type. I'm not gonna go through all these. I'll just go through some of the, the more important ones. So along is a number without a decimal place. Double is a number with a decimal place. So the number pi 3.14 would be able to be stored in double, but along would only be able to store the number three. It would miss the 1.14, et cetera. Text is just simply text. Now, if you do choose text, you get some other options down here, length. Length is how long you want that text to be. And in this case, the default is 255 characters. So if you would like to use less, definitely enter the value you'd like to, to use. So let's say if you just only wanted to use 10 of them, that means the string can only be 10 characters long. But I'm gonna use a number in this case, and I'll use a long, and you can see Allow null values is yes for all of these. Null simply means nothing, empty. So if you choose no for this, it would require the user adding data to enter a value into this before it would commit. So you wouldn't be able to save it without a value. So that's what the difference here is. For the most part, I would recommend not including this. If you absolutely need to have data in this when you're adding the data, then choose no here and it would force the user to enter some text there. Click next. This allows you to specify the spatial reference. And in this case, the default for me is correct, but the if you wanted to choose another one, you can enter the value here. So you can choose UTM, for example, and this would find all the different UTM values. In this case, WGS 1984, Northern Hemisphere, and then you can go find what zone you're in. So 17N, that one's a, a common one. Uh, the other option is uh, well, Web Mercator. 
It's the WGS1984 Web Mercator. This is the one I'm going to use in this case. So if you're not sure which one to use, this one's a good option, especially if you're doing something in RTS Online. If you do need to use something specific for on-site, often UTM is fine. So this is how the data will be stored on its file. So uh, it's best to use what you're displaying. It's best to keep everything consistent. If you can't and you're not sure, use Web Mercator. Next, this is the tolerance for the minimum distance between the coordinates before they're considered the same. So if you set this too high, if you wanted two points really close to each other, it would actually think that they're the same point. So leaving this as the default is fine. You can see it's very high precision. The next is the resolution, and this is it snaps the data in its storage. So if the data, if your resolution is too high, you would actually get the points too far apart um, and they would be considered the same. Think of it as like a grid paper and the intersection of the lines on the grid paper is the only place you can place the actual points. This is defining how big those grids are. The defaults are fine. Next, this storage configuration has to do with how the data will be stored in an enterprise environment. We're not doing that here. We're just using the simple stuff. So a default is fine. Click Finish, and it's going to go and create your new plots layer in this case. And you can see it's a point type. And if I right click, I could add it to a new map or add it to an existing map if you hadn't done that already. And what's really important to understand is where this data are. And you'll notice it's in a geo database, a file geo database. So this file, if I copy the path for this and bring up a browser, it's really important to understand you can't navigate to it. And it's a whole bunch of weird files if you go one directory back. So this uh, geodatabase is a file geodatabase. You would have to copy the entire contents. Unlike a shape file, which look like this, you don't actually see them. You see the entire container, which is the file geodatabase. So it's just important to recognize where the data are stored and how you're dealing with it. So if you needed to deal with the shape file outside of ArcGIS Pro, you'd need to be able to create a shape file. If you're dealing with just ArcGIS Pro and creating maps and using ArcGIS Online, it's better to use a file geodatabase. Thank you.